when we take this all back to CPA firms, you know, if I said, oh, here's a bank, but the only way to do deposits is you would need to mail in a deposit slip and a check, you know, you would think that that sounds old fashioned. But this is really, for the most part, how the accounting industry, the tax prep industry works, right? We mail clients an organizer and they mail, they fill out stuff and mail it back with source documents. And it's been going that way for over 20 years. When I was a CPA at Coopers and Librand more than 20 years ago, we did it that way. And that's, I think, that's the only thing I can think of that hasn't changed in that 20 years is that we still use the paper organizers. And, you know, it's analogous in terms of people might like their CPA, they might think they do a good job, get them, you know, optimize their tax situation, etc. But they might not like the interaction of having to fill out an organizer and having to mail it in or go into the office, right? So there's pieces of the interaction that might not be providing a great client experience, even though those aren't related to the core competencies of what the tax preparer does. Now, these problems have, uh, you know, people have tried to solve these problems before. It's not that no one has said, hey, you know, isn't there a better way than mailing out all these organizers and getting them back and having to enter them and scan them, etc. But the technical substitutions that have come up have been worsely, uh, if that's a word, have been more poorly adopted than paper organizers. So most CPA firms tell us that clients, maybe 10 to 15% of clients fill out a paper organizer. The rest just send in the documents. So we'll call that an adoption rate of 10 to 15%. The rest toss the organizer. But if you take a look at the alternatives, the technological alternatives that people have come up with, like an, uh, like an online organizer, the adoption rate is even less. Most people, most firms that have tried to use an online organizer tell us that they got maybe a 2% adoption rate, 2, versus a paper organizer of 10 to 15%. So, you know, it might be good for the CPA firm if clients used it, but clients don't use it. With portals, you know, similarly, um, uh, first of all, a portal doesn't replace an organizer. There's, there's no questionnaire. There's no um, list of prior year documents and you know things like that. And so some people have tried to kind of you know take like a PDF of an organizer and upload it to a portal. And, but it it just it's too much work. And I I think if you just think about this example, what if a bank said you can deposit online, but here's what you need to do: you need to go to our portal and download the open the PDF of the deposit slip, print it out, fill it out then scan that deposit slip and that check and go back to our portal and upload that, you know, no one would do it. It would be easier to just mail in the check. And so that's what effectively has been happening with tax. The reason why the adoption rates for online organizers and portals, at least for 1040s, are worse than paper organizers is because the paper is actually easier to use for the taxpayer. So they just say, you know, you know, I'll just use the paper. And, that is really the problem. That's been the problem with these attempts to replace the online organizer is that they've only taken into account what would be great for the CPA firm. But that's not realistic, right? Uh, taxpayers are only going to use it if it's good for them. It needs to be a win-win. It needs to be good for both sides.